Hey, Soraya. Good afternoon. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm excited that we're having afternoon tea with Permanent Green Light today. Uh, Celebrating could, their new single, right? I was just going to say, if we're having afternoon tea, that must mean we're celebrating something. It's Ooh, celebratory. Yeah. Celebratory uh, tea. Do you have crumpets with your tea? No, I do not today. No crumpets, no biscuits. No biscuits either. No biscuits. But I've got tea. I've got lots of it. <laughs> right. I do too. I too. I got a bag of tea here. Um, I don't know what I'm drinking, <laughs> but Chris Bruckner of Permanent Green Light said buy some, so I bought some. And it has something to do with a goddess and something to do with compassion or mercy. And, <laughs> I don't Sorry, know. I went. I went straight empire. I'm drinking Persian black tea Ooh. with cardamom. So, Ooh, that sounds nothing yummy fancy. Too. That sounds yummy too. So, uh, That's good. he he told me that uh, I I couldn't use tea bags. That I had to use loose leaf tea because I'm an adult now. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so, you know there are rules and there are rules. <laughs> So today we're speaking to all three members of Permanent Green Light, which that are... That is a treat! Yes, and who are the members again? So the one and only Michael Quercio. Yes. That divine, and then the divine Chris Brunner. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So we'll be talking about their new single, which is released the day that this episode will be released. Uh, February February the 26th. Good. I'm glad you said that because I was trying, I was trying to wrap my brain around what that date will be, and their new single, "Enormous Highs." Yes. Uh, with the B-side, "Silver Girl." So. Um, and produced by by the amazing and incomparable Earl Mankey. Indeed, indeed. So let's so, give these guys a call and start this tea party. Let's do this. Hi, this is Soraya. And this is Jeff. Our podcast is called Paisley Stage Raspberry and Rhyme. A podcast where the two of us play music that we like and share anecdotes and background about the tune. We hope you'll join our conversation. And without further ado, agrubiar. Let's get groovy. Hey, guys. Hey. hey Michael, how are hey. you doing? Hello, Paisley people. Hello. Welcome to the Hello. tea party. Hello. Oh yes, yes. I'm having Wait, a little oh. something, a little stiffer. Uh oh. <laughs> Wait, All I right. thought this. What, what kind of tea are we having today? <laughs> Remember, back in the back in the days of prohibition, you used to have gin in your teacup, so it could be anything. True. It could be anything. Right. Yeah, Michael's probably I'm... doing it now. <laughs> ah, Chris. <laughs> So, so I think we have all three members on the call today from Permanent Green Light, and we are having a tea party celebrating the band's new release, right, Soraya? Yes, yes, great new, great new singles, Enormous Highs, oh. Silver Girl. Yes, yes. So we're really, really excited to uh, talk to you all about it. So. For our listeners, um, yes, we're sharing tea and spilling the tea, as the kids say these days. We're sharing tea with Permanent Green Light, celebrating the band's new single, Enormous Highs, and the B-side, Silver Girls, the first new music from the band since the 90s? Yeah, since the 90s, yeah. Since the 90s. Yeah. And the single is being released on the day that this episode will air. Um, and the single is available for pre-order now, or you can get it on today, which is February 26, 2021. Congratulations to the band. Yay. Great. Thank you. So we wanted to welcome all three of you. Michael, congratulations on your new record. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Yes, and, congratulations, Michael. <laughs> and Chris, Chris, you as well. Congratulations. Hello, thank you. And Matt, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having us. What's our, our, are, you, are you more excited about the tea or, or, or the single? That's what I mean. <laughs> I have to be honest, the single, but um, but this All tea right. is really tasty. And um, I did order the wrong one. I did not order the Goddess of Compassion. I ordered the Goddess of Mercy. But... Well, it might be a tra that might be a translation issue. Maybe maybe the tea is, is, is still good. I, I, I don't know. It's very tasty. It's very tasty. Okay. okay. But, I'm drinking but, the goddess of bunny. 
There you go. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice callback there. Don't Speaking of... Ca- <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of callbacks, I did want to jump back a little bit before we get started on the single, if you guys don't mind, to October of 2018 when Permanent Green Light released the compilation Hallucinations, and thank you guys for joining us when we had a call on that. And that came out on Omnivore Records, and then you guys followed that up with a couple of really well-attended live performances, one in almost two years ago today, uh, February 10th at, at uh, in 2019 at the Federal. I know, Soraya, you remember that well, because it was raining that day, and you had recently got off a plane from Europe, and you were only back for a couple hours, and then here we are in the rain. Hours, and there I was. Yeah. <laughs> and then that you was guys... a wild night. That was a great show. It was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and like I said, very well attended. You guys rocked that show, that's for sure. And then a few months later, on May 26, 2019, uh, again, you guys performed at the Redwood. But since then, we're not sure what the band has been doing. So can one of you guys chime in about what's been happening since we saw you guys at the Redwood on May 26, 2019? I'm trying to remember the Redwood. We oh, played that? The um, yeah, Did so we do that? that was, Where yeah, was so the, LA? the question was the opening oh, act. The, oh, the place up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was the Redwood. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, the Federal was the one like at 11 in the morning. Right, right. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a great show. Yeah, that was more. That was like mo- the, yeah, that was morning bre- tea for that one. That breakfast was the breakfast tea. Show. The federal, yeah, yeah, the yeah, the okay. Was the breakfast and show they literally the gave us breakfast. I never played that early in my life. Yeah, Redwood was <laughs> the breakfast I, show. And I I played some shows in my day, but like it was like never I'd never played eleven in the morning. But the, the eggs were fantastic. <laughs> oh, they were amazing. They were amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, and Matt, you remember that show early in the morning? Very much. Yeah, that was an amazing show. Yeah, it was a great time. So, Matt, can you tell us what the band has been up to since May 26, 2019? Well, you know, it really all boils down to Chris Bruckner kind of issuing us these these prescriptions and these the kind of these directions, really. And my recollection, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, is you told us, do nothing. And that went on for some time. And then we got delegated the, the, the text that she prescribed. And um, the first thing that I recall was um, Dr. Faustrel. Yeah, yeah, that's – yeah, Matt, Matt is correct. We, we kind of follow a higher – I'm kind of the, uh, the magus of the band. And I, I, um, I connect into like a higher kind of a plane, and then I just get instructions. And then I just pass them out to the band. Um, that, that's, that's the way it yeah. seems to happen. Yeah. So sometimes it includes. Is... Go ahead. Well, I was going to say sometimes it includes special eating regimens and uh, <laughs> teas and, and and certain herbs. Um, Medicinal. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. That's. It, it's we. It, it's due to the. Um, I, I guess the universe is telling us what to do. You know, we don't we don't argue with it. If we argue, we lose, but only a hundred percent of the time. So. A lot of our material, it's, it's kind of like a, it's like Chris Bruckner edicts that we just follow and build on. No, seriously, I'm totally serious. And like every band, and then it comes down to, especially since we've been doing things again, uh, as apart from uh, back then, uh, the, then you have like Matt, who is like the guy that's like, hey, you know, we got to do so. He's He's like the, he's like the, the foreman. You well, know, he's the guy that makes you, that makes you he makes you get off of your coffee break and or tea break and, and then actually actually work. Which <laughs> we, we don't really like to do but... love him and hate him for for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so once once we go through this process and these types of um, you know, exercises, then we, we do demo we demo. And and Michael will come in with ideas, I'll come in with ideas and we'll get together and it typically the next step is, okay, let's demo these ideas, these songs these songs that we've that we've cooked up well were, were we going into a, a bigger picture with all of this and I, I didn't know how much you guys wanted to talk about the bigger picture of everything but and i don't know how much we can talk about it chris because it's, <laughs> it's, 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 that's part that's of your true. edict is there's certain things <laughs> we can't discuss that, that's true I, I even forget what it what the edict is but yeah you're right i think we're we did want to lay some groundwork leading up to the single. So if there's any background um, about 
what makes this band tick. We're all for it. Mm. Well, we, it, it's, just, it, it it's, a, it's a process. It starts with Chris. It actually goes into functioning with Matt. And I kind of fill the, fill the part of the, uh, just kind of the wayward, bumbling, lovable, <laughs> lovable. lovable misfit, you know. <laughs> well, the wacky neighbor. If it were yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> well, you know, that thing is how, how, how true that actually is. If you guys know this, Michael and I get together quite often. And I'll tell you, without Matt, there absolutely nothing happens. I mean, it's just this. Just <laughs> nothing musical. No, like nothing. You absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing musical happens. happens. <laughs> yeah, nothing. Absolutely zero. But we do. We do have good, good um, tea, lunch, sometimes wine, conversations. You know, but there's, 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 there's nothing. You know, it, it doesn't nothing, actually nothing turn into put on vinyl, really. But no, that's but where what, Matt comes in. But wine yeah. and, and conversation and, definitely happens. And when, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, in this, yeah. and when we, in this case, once we went through all that and we, we did demo a few songs and um, <clears throat> I had, uh, I had reached out to Earl Mankey who, you know, as you know, has a, has a history with the band and, uh, and certainly Michael. And, um, and I, I played him some of these demos and he got interested in, in working with us and, and kind of bringing it to, um, you know, making it happen really with, with in, in a studio in his studio. So when you guys uh, got together with Earl, was the intention to record a single or just start laying down some of these songs that you had demos for? Well, it, it was it, definitely we to lay down the tunes. Right? Go ahead, Matt. yeah. It was it was pretty it was pretty open ended. That was what I was going to say. With with just let's 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 get together. And when we got together, it happened really fast with with just talking about the songs and arranging and coming up with ideas because he liked what we did. And then it, then it kind of developed and because we'll, we had ideas about it conceptually that were just beyond the, the songs. And, and he came out, right. He, he came out to a rehearsal space here in San Pedro um, that, uh, that we were using and Matt and him drove out and Ur- Earl sat and listened to us live. We played him the songs and Earl just said, no, <laughs> but then, <laughs> and then Earl just kind of went over the stuff, and then kind of, you know, told him, you know, again, this is what it takes to make it a yes. And so that's when he kind of uh-huh. went over the stuff with us. Oh wow! Sounds like remember. he was stepping into a producer role for sure. Yeah, luckily we locked the door, so he couldn't get out. So he just had to kind of deal with it. <laughs> that's right. I think at, at that point. Chris had had prescribed him a tea that that also <laughs> made him more docile. Chris, did you also give him a text? Thing, yeah. Well, I think that particular tea was a hibiscus <laughs> enema, but, oh, but no. it, was, it was very medicinal. It was it was you, you know I I don't really want to talk about the uh, medical remedy, but but okay. you know it, it was medicinal definitely. Okay. We warned you that there were some things we can't talk about. So. It's right. understood. <laughs> Understood and noted. <laughs> We're definitely curious about the writing of these particular two songs, um, Enormous High and Silver Girls. Um, so I understand that, Michael, you might have brought in these tracks. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Enormous Highs was, um, uh, we had gotten, our neighbor um, had given us some 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 seed. And so uh, here at the house here, we planted them in a little uh, in a little planter and and uh, and uh, tea leaves, right? And then the, well, maybe a little stronger. And this plant got <laughs> big. This, this plant was in the window and it got big. I didn't really pay attention. You don't have to do much to those things. Mm-hmm. And and I just I remember just one day looking at it. Go, oh my God, it's enormous. Ah, and then a little thing went off in my head, and um, and I ran to the guitar and and I kind of put it down, and had it kind of in my head, and I think at one of the a while, I might have played it for Matt or something, and he wow that that's really good, and 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 I kind of we kind of went back and forth 
uh, with it. Uh, and then uh, I kind of gave it to Matt and then Matt did his thing and, uh, and, and uh, I together and, and then finally it just kind of came out to, to what it was. Uh, and then in the, it just, it just kind of evolved, you know, into, into what you finally hear on the record. Wow. Am I right, guys? It, <laughs> yes. That's, that's, I didn't know about the, um, the, the little seeds you planted. Now it makes sense. But... <laughs> I mean, the, right. those, to, those <laughs> tomato plants get pretty high. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> they do, indeed. <laughs> it made it, lousy brownie. Did we, we tried to make brownies out of it, and they, you, you have to actually know how to cook those things, or else they yes. taste kind of weird. So, anyway. Yeah. I think when we used to wow. do that, it, it, we had to make... We had to make the herb butter first, and then yeah. we used the herb butter to make brownies. Oh. So. And you have to use oh, yes. sweet butter. So oh. The, the Not that, you know, the these are things we've heard on the street. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we understand. So was Silver Girls the same process, Michael, where you would bring that mm -hmm. in and the band would... Help me, help me out with this one, Matt. Cause... Oh, I think I, this is, so this is a, a very different uh, situation because... We, we worked with Earl, and we, we, we tracked more than these two songs because okay. we began working on, on a, you know, more music with him. And uh, the COVID thing kicked in. And, and, you know, as you know, everything ground to a halt in, in the world and, in, and certainly in, in our world with the studio. So um, we, we knew that we wanted to release Enormous Highs first. And the other two songs, which we'll talk at a future date about those when they happen, um, would get released is uh, um, they they fit really well together. So we we wanted to come up with something that was a B side. So <clears throat> I, I guess if you you know Silver Girl is, is kind of like our free as a bird <laughs> with the because I I digitized a, a demo from 1992. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I, I see. I, am I, I dead? Yeah. Am I dead? <laughs> yeah, oh I no. Pretended. Yeah, I overdubbed the, the guitars and, and the backing vocals on a demo, a firm free light demo from 1992, and I just pretended Michael and Chris had gone on vacation. <laughs> 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 and I just, I just, tracked, I just tracked on top of it, and we liked that song a lot, and it kind of disappeared off the radar. Chris remembered it as a candidate for our new recordings like whatever happened to silver girl so because we couldn't get together and record i'm like well let's let's take this song that was that was good and and, and i i'm a big fan of michael singing on it i think it singing sounds incredible and it's all that, that that's all a four track demo what you're hearing there with 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 the with the basic okay yeah that makes a lot of sense and i will say michael when, that Enormous High, okay. your your vocal on Enormous High is very strong. It's probably one oh, of one you. of the best vocals I've heard you do, in my opinion. Well, it was funny because we went in. I mean, like I said, we 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 gave Earl some some things we had done. He came in and he and he sat with us a couple times, you know, live. And then we went into the studio and laid down. Uh, you record stuff. You know what I'm talking about, Jeff. You know, we laid down the basics. Okay. And yeah. we went into the control room to listen to the basics. And I just, we're all standing there listening to it come through the big monitors. And I just turned to Chris and I said, what the, what the hell are you doing? I can't do this. I can't sing to that. that. And, he was, and he was like, well, you never said anything. Is what I'm <laughs> when it so we kind of went back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so but we went back and, 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 and put on a... Really. Yeah, and then we put on a, uh, you know, he kind of we, we revamped his groove. Mm -hmm. Chris gets his groove, and then and that's mm -hmm. kind of what you're hearing on the record. And then it was, and then I love to get vocals out of the way. You know, oh, they're wow. like a necessary evil for me. Huh. For me. So I like when we're when you're tracking and you you're done kind of. I think I can we just do this now? It's like the dentist or something <laughs> for me. And so so it's like right then we went in and we did it. And I swear, like I was like. I was singing the song and I'm like, feel like I'm channeling like, you know, you know, mind gardens, Michael, oh. you know, going, going Ricky back Stark. to that Ricky start, Michael. And it was like, wow. it felt as I was doing it, I just felt that kind of coming through. And I was thinking, wow, you know, because I had never really sung the songs, you know, 
uh, you know, other than just through a mic where you can't really hear yourself and, you know, what a rehearsal room is like. Right. <laughs> you, don't, yeah. you, you don't really hear anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. And, and so that's how that just kind of came together. Uh, and uh, well done. Luckily, we, 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 we hammered Chris into shape and then there we are. <laughs> that, that took kind of like the print. greater part of the, of the track. <laughs> <laughs> The, the hammering I mean, or the drums? Me, me there was an entire. It was. The, the, it was a drum. It was an entire drum solo that had music yeah, on yeah. top of it. That was. <laughs> there were one or two moments of, and there were two measures of straight beat and and. Um, yeah. The rest of the solo. So I was trying. I was thinking one giant was, roll. Michael was thinking of like early three o'clock vocals. I was thinking of burn. By Deep Purple, right. and, um, <laughs> it, was, so, so, it was kind of like it, it could have been more John Coltrane if we had gone with yeah. with, with yeah, that's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, it would have been like a Love Supreme or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I have but, to anyway. Ask. Thank you, yeah. thank you, Jeffrey, for uh, your compliment. By the way, yeah. Thanks. Oh no, Saray and I both agree on that. We've talked yeah. about this no. at oh. length. Uh, there's a lot that uh, that we want to ask about the singles a, a little more in depth, but. I, have to ask a question about the envisioned concept album. Okay, so Jeff, hold on to your horses, okay? Musique profane and the occultation of Alfred Jerry. So Jeff, listeners, if anyone doesn't know what musique profane is, it refers to secular music. And Alfred Jerry is a French symbolist writer who wrote a play well, called Le Bourgeois. That talk, that portrays the bourgeoisie as the super mediocre. All right, I'm in. I'm in. I bought in. <laughs> I, Where did the title come from? I don't know. I can't. I, I can't disagree with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh Michael. God, this has to be you. <laughs> oh, was this you, Matt, or was this Michael? This sounds like a Michael title. This is a this is a combination of of all of ideas rolled up into yeah. into one. And, uh, and and Chris can speak at length about Jari because he's he's kind of the source for the inspiration there. Um, it's uh, uh, Chris. Why don't you explain his his relevance yeah. with uh, with what the envision concept? Because it's it's in development. That's the thing. Okay. It's, it's it's because of the COVID thing. We had to pause the the, re- the yeah. recording, and so we couldn't. We, it, it couldn't manifest itself fully. And part of concept records that I like, they just don't kind of get written out and then done. They kind of evolve as they happen so um chris i'll take it away well i mean it, it's such a long story but i i mean um i we i was going to go to the collage du pataphysique on my next trip for for the band the band had requested me to go to um i guess really inspire more conceptual uh direction for 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 the um for the record but you know with with covid and everything which in retrospect i think covid has helped everything by the way but I, you know at the time it stopped the trip so um we were loosely basing this on uh jari and um i think that came i think that came early on that that was that that was years ago we we picked it back up um to uh finish the um, the last thing we talked about uh it, with michael was um doing um Exploits and opinions of uh, uh, Doctor Fastrol, uh, pataphysician, and so that's what we we picked that up. And I was going to go to Europe to try to figure out exactly what the direction was. So that that's where we that's where wow. all that came from. Wow! This is all going to come out of you know Chris's trip to France. That you know because we just went into the studio with Earl just before it was just days before. We finished up just days before everything closed down, and, wow. you know, doing doing the basics. And, and like I said, I got those. We got the vocals in, and and Chris and Matt had gone in a couple more times just just before everything, you know, that you know what hit the fan, yeah. so to speak. And, well, and, and, and with yeah. finishing, well, I did, and I did some finishing touches at home on remotely in my recording system here. I, I can see your sound. I like I like it. I like it. I had some questions about Enormous Highs because it's a very dynamic song. There's several different parts. There's different sections. Uh, one where the song breaks down and there's keyboards and all kinds of voices going on underneath Michael singing and a total freak out at the end. Were the parts planned out ahead of time before you got into the studio or 
did they just flow out naturally? Did you do them in post or was it, were the basic tracks just all done like that with all the dynamic changes in the song? Well, the, I was kind of high. Bridge, so oh, Matt, yeah. what did we do? An enormously high, <laughs> apparently. So the, the bridge was, we had a, the, the bridge was there and performed by the band, but we wanted something that really uh, kind of took it out there into the stratosphere, like sounding where it was a big change, not only with the, with the chords, but with, with the vibe. And so um, just me talking to Earl and saying, let's, let's just have it empty out. And that's where I came up with that keyboard part that instead of playing it on guitar, it's playing that arpeggio part on a keyboard. And then the voices there tie in to our concept because the voices that you hear at the end of Silver of Silver Girl are some of those same voices are there mm -hmm. in the in the middle eight. Oh. that are speaking. And, uh, and so so again, without letting the cat out of the bag, the concept record that we're in the midst of, you know, putting together and, and just being part of it, you know, it, it and, and kind of like, you know, taking a step back with releasing it as a single. We haven't, like I said, we have another single lined up that we're, we're, we're looking for a label to release. And we're kind of, because of this era that we're in where work starts and stops and people can't get together, in talking to Chris and Michael about this, it's like, well, we could, we could figure out a concept record and release it all at once at some point in the future to be determined, or we could release bits at a time. And, mm -hmm. and kind of like, you know, that way that Dickens would release a chapter of Oliver Twist. Right. in a periodical and then the next chapter would come out a week or a month later and over time it, the story got told kind of seeing it like something like that where over time the concept will get revealed so we don't want to reveal the end okay. or the where it necessarily goes we're it, all it's in ser it's serialized yeah but i think we started in the middle didn't we or I, where did we start volume four <laughs> volume, volume four, four. that's right so that, that's yeah we're safely in the middle exactly wow uh, I'm all in. But I, uh, but I can tell you, but I can tell you, Jeffrey and Soria, girl who gets the band high and enormous highs is the same girl that Silver Girl. That I can, ooh, that, that is something that can be revealed today. Wow. That, that's dangerous, though. Dangerous it's to reveal. The, it's the reason. same, it's the same character. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Who comes in and out of the, of, of the different song. It's all like the same, the same entity, if you will. Ah. Uh. I'm very intrigued. You guys got me hook, line, and sinker on this one. Quadruple album. <laughs> Quadruple there album. you go. <laughs> there you go. And if we can have extra freakouts on every single song, I'm in. I'm in. Um, so then can I ask a, just a quick question about Silver Girl? Um, it's filled with, you know, these, these trippy voices and this sitar um, that Anthony... Safari comes in on um, whose idea was to add this. I mean, now we know a little bit about the story of Silver Girl, but um, the sitar, the voices, was that an original intent or was, did that develop over time too? That, that's something that, so keeping with the concept of Silver Girl, who in, in those lyrics, there's, it has a crisis and so she she's having she's freaking out having done what she did to the band in, in enormous highs and so in the end that's when she seeks out guidance from Chris Braxton who is helped. the one mm -hmm. issuing his 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 aphorisms at the end and the the, the sitar is part of that um, you know kind of like she's turning to is it Eastern religion is it some yeah. sort of arcane philosophy. This will get fleshed out over time, but that was the concept of, of the ending. And that, that's supposed to segue into another song, but obviously it's a single. We're only doing two songs at, you know, A, a side, B side. So, I'm loving this, Soraya. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm already bought in. That's it. <laughs> All right. So to the guru, Chris Bruckner, Silver Girl starts off with a 3-4 count in, but as soon as the song starts, we're... We're we're going into a four four beat. What what's happening here? Oh god, that was in ninety ninety whatever. Um ninety two. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh I'm sure there's a rational explanation for that somewhere. I doubt um, it. 
But, any there's an irrational explanation. It's an irrational, and that, that should be fleshed out too. Maybe, maybe we're we're getting a, a hint on what to do. Yeah, I, I don't well, really know. Did, is, is that what happened? Did I do that? Yeah, there, it's Did a I do that? it's a three four count in, but once the song starts, it's four four. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong. <laughs> I think you punched the drums in. Did that have something to do with I, it? I, I know what it is. If you see what you're hearing is that Chris has a has a has a a, a very heavy jazz background. Okay. I'm not saying this to be funny. Actually, he actually does. I mean, he grew up with jazz. And when I and he, I Chris to me is a jazz drummer who's got to play rock and roll because you know what what else is he gonna do? You know. <laughs> what, what is he going to do? He's going like, he's, you know, there are no jazz clubs in Santa Ana. Are there, Chris? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> so, so when yeah, you I hear that stuff, I bet that, that's, yeah. that's the jazz thing coming through, you know, yeah. with that, 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 that mind, you know, uh, okay. where one time signature can just kind of like lead you into another time signature, you know, Dave Brubecky, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, probably, that's, his, that's probably true. Yeah, so I think that's where that that's to me that's where that comes from. I'm so used to it, you know. Yes, <laughs> Michael, you gave me you know changing, changing the uh, time signatures mid songs. Yeah. So um, yeah, you got to be flexible with 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 the way you play. It sounds like you have to be on your toes with permanent green light. That's for sure. Yes. Always. So Matt, you had talked about the next single that you were shopping for a label. So this single that is being released today, um, Enormous High and Silver Girl, this came out on Hypnotic Bridge. How did Hypnotic Bridge become involved for this single? Well, um, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, you know, you've known Stu for a while, Michael. You can speak to that. Yeah, I go back. I go way back with Stu uh, when he was a young Air Force cadet, but we won't get into that. And um, <laughs> just that is true. You guys actually have no idea. And uh, <laughs> And so I played it for him, you know, not really thinking because this is a very, um, his label is like, you know, very kin to, to psychedelia. Right. You know, he, yes. you know, it's, 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 that's, that's what they do. That's their thing. And, you know, and I, so that's why I, I just thought this track, you know, I think this track is the most psychedelic thing I've ever been a part of. It's very trippy. Um, <laughs> it's I, very trippy. I used to I used to think, you know, like the, maybe something like the three o'clocks, um, stupid Einstein, you know, maybe that was it, which is, it has the, these great psych qualities, but never quite, you know, like this, because this is, you know, to me, this is, has a lot of aspects to it are quite over the top in that vein. It's amazing. And so I played, I played him a rough, a rough mix as we were coming on early on, um, and, and he just got shot back to me and goes, I'd love to put this out. Oh. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and so that's kind of that's how that kind of happened. Like, you know, we didn't quite know what we were going to do with it. And uh, so I thought it would be great, you know. Um, and so that's why uh, that's how Stu came in to the picture and, and, and his label. And uh, the cover art from Robin, am I saying it right, Nista? I believe that's right. Uh, how did Matt, Matt was deal Matt dealt with that. Matt will be able to answer answer. So and Matt, was... go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. go ahead. Well, you, you you're asking about the the art. That was something that Stu um, knows that artist and connected with him and said, um, and, and and basically that artist, the, the idea behind him is he does what he does. It it no one really says, hey, we want you to do this. It's like he comes up with. Um, with, with his, his designs on his own and because he's so respected and does such a great job. And the only thing that I said to that to Stu was that, that sounds great. It, it, the, the one thing is the, the whole, um, the girl who gets the band high and enormous highs and silver girl, maybe he might want to do something with, with a, with a, with a woman on the cover. So that was the only thing that we said. And we got that back and we were blown away. Just, I, I think it looks incredible, his work. And so that was Stu that hooked that up. Uh, okay. <laughs> It, and it does give um, it does give the the person buying the single. We definitely get this visual input, and then we're getting the audio. We're getting the music. I mean, this is really a complete entity in this single. You know, that's why I can't wait for this album. Yeah. 
You're going to have to wait for the future chapters, Soraya. Sounds Bloody like. hell, I'm in. All I'm right, ready. so my and next question... That was what was... Oh, go ahead, oh, I'm please. Sorry. No, no. Well, I was going to say, um, th that was because Michael had known Stu, and um, so when I connected with him and talking through um, the idea of like, okay, you, you know, getting to know him and meet him, it was obvious that he really, he really is a music lover, and um, it really takes a lot of pride in making sure his, his stuff looks great. Because people would ask us, about like releasing our music and, and asking about things. And so to talk to someone like Stu, who cares so much and, and makes it look great, as good as the music sounds, ideally, um, that meant a lot to us. Yeah, it looks like it's um, in this single was put into the right hand. So I'm interested to see what happens for the, f the next single and who becomes part of that. But I had a question about the instrumentation on these singles. Um, I'm a music nerd and Matt, I reached out to you when I first heard the song a couple days ago for Silver Girl. And there's this um, melody, little melody guitar line that I absolutely love that you did. Um, can you each three talk about what instruments you used on these recordings? Maybe starting with you, Matt, like what guitars, amps, effects? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's fun stuff to talk about. Um, so with, uh, with what you talked about with Silver Girl, I think you're talking about the fuzz tone. Yes. On the, on the middle eight. That's a, an old uh, Mose Wright Fuzz Wright that I I have, uh, and it, it's a it's a great pedal. It's, it was it's from it's from 1965. It's one of the first Fuzz Wrights made, and so uh, adding that harmony thing and getting that gnarly fuzz, it just seemed to do something there. So um, that's, that's what, what Iron Butterfly used, by the way. But I'm yeah, sure. and Ron oh. Ashton from the Stooges. Wow, um, it, it it's a gets a great sound, and then for for enormous highs, Michael's Michael came up with that riff. And it was just such a heavy riff. And we really wanted it to be bass heavy, like to have that big sound. So what I did is um, I, I'm using a Les Paul with a Sam Ash fuzz box, another old fuzz. And for the second guitar, the left-right guitars, it's a Les Paul, it's a Les Paul with a, a, um, an Earthquaker Park fuzz. And I, and I got a fuzz tone sound and then pulled the volume back on my guitars just to get it on the cusp of fuzzing. So it's kind of clean. And I played those through a Fender Champ, which oh. um, like, like Kisses, Dress to Kill, oh, those, nice. all those guitars are Fender Champs. And I, I love that because they, they sound heavy, but they sound, they have a certain tone. So that, that's what, I, I really wanted Michael's bass to, to, to be prominent doing that riff and have the guitars off to the side, just kind of, you know, doing like a clean fuzz, a boxy sound. No, those guitars sound that, heavy. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mike. If I if I can chime in, I think that I mean, if we had gone more straightforward, this could have gone into Metallica territory. Oh wow! Which <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy. I wanted it to avoid that. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it to have um, that 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 you know, like he was talking about Stooges and that. So when for the bass. Um, I went for uh, like you know the bass guitar is a is a high watt guitar amp oh. head okay and and a Fender Jazz just oh. through like a big fifteen inch speaker oh wow which is like you know back in the day you know there were no big bass amplification companies you know when they made you know the records we love you know the guy was playing through a guitar head oh. you know. Huh. And 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 so uh, you know you know the say you know seven sixty eight you know that would have been just a you know that's why you see uh, you know Noel Redding with you know these bunch of marshals behind him they're all guitar amps you know I never realized and, you that. know he's yeah, yeah there's just and and there was something about a Fender bass with like a tube guitar head you know just going you know full throttle you get you get that bit bit of that distortion and that and but it sits into the mix 
so incredibly, I think, you know, and that's kind of why you get that, that great tone. And so I just tried to, I tried to emulate that. Um, it sounds you heavy. Know, you're, 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 yeah. You hear like geezer Butler or something, you know, that's all just like, that's all just some guy with a fender bass or something. Just, just, just cranking through a, a tube guitar head. Wow. You know, because, you know, the, the first big like bass amp with wattage was Ampeg, like an Ampeg SVT. You know, and those were those were more like seventy one seventy. Those were a little bit later, you know. Okay. When they finally came out with those, so really, what you're hearing on all the records we love is is just some guy with a you know, with a tube guitar head, just you know, turning it up. So that's it, what I tried to do. Anyway. It sounds fantastic. It so, really sounds fantastic. So, Chris, what about you? What 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 are you drumming on? Anything special or? Mm, boy, this is gonna be tough. Um, well, for the first time, this was not my kit. So um, I think that's the first time I've ever recorded without my kit, which, um, you know, it's a little, it's a little, uh, it's a little different doing that. I, we, we got to the studio and Earl had the kit there. I was not used to it, but I think the Are they sonars? Thing, there was some special thing that he had made it or. It wasn't, it, it was like a sonar. It wasn't a sonar and it was, yeah, okay. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was from another country like Brazil, it was like from Brazil or. Yeah. Argentina, yeah, some, was, some some interesting country that they were from. The the big yeah, them are, flown in from like they were made from a banana tree or something. I don't know. Matt's yeah. gone. <laughs> he had he had them there, and he said they. I don't. We can put your drums up if you want, but we can't move this set because for some reason it's got the the best tone he's ever had, and he didn't move it once it was in its corner. He didn't tune it. Because it was tuned, like the guy that 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 owned them, he was from South America, and he tuned it and left. And I don't even know if he's been back. But that that was it. It was the best sound he's ever had. So he didn't do anything to it. He said, "You can bring your kit and set it up, but we're not touching or moving this set." Wow. So I just said, "No, I, I'd, I'd rather play this." So I, you know, I kind of took me a while to get used to it. But um, yeah, it had some kind of magic in it. It was it was tuned perfectly. I didn't touch it. Um, uh, we just played it as is, and and that that's that's kind of the story there. So you got to the point where you were comfortable with the kit. Well, I'm still not comfortable with it. It, it argues with me, but but I was <laughs> yeah enough enough to enough to get the the track done. Matter of fact, I think Michael was talking about you know having to redo the track. I think that was the drum kit's fault in the first place. After I after I got done screaming at him, you can't play. You, <laughs> yeah, you're worthless. Yeah. You know, whatever you had, you, you, you've lost, you know, That's right. why are, why are you here? <laughs> you know, and after, after I got, after I got over all that, you know, we were able just to, to record. Well, I, I thought it was me. I was like, you're right. This is this right. And, and, you know, finally later we found out it was the kid. You know, and then um, so, it was like I'm going to call the police, the the pizza delivery man in to do the drum tra- take. You know, because <laughs> I am I'm quite I'm quite sure that he can get through it. You know, but and eventually we were. I, it, it well, I think this, in fact, I, think I was going to replace the entire band with the delivery boys at one at one period. Like, you're, but you're, giving it, you're, much, you're giving away too much, Michael, I'm, concept. I'm sorry. <laughs> because that's part of the concept with, with Chris's yeah. process is Chris gets himself fired every session as part of the creative process. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's a wonderful uh, concept. I have to say, going back to Enormous Highs on the single, the... the um, the end where you guys do the freak out part oh the guitars God. the bass the drums are all amazing Everything. when you when you guys that's live that's all live <sighs> one take Chris, uh, matt tell them tell them that tell them. yeah the... matt's gonna be honest so i yeah. i trust when matt said matt is this the truth oh, okay maybe, maybe matt shouldn't tell them that <laughs> <laughs> please matt help us out it's here all me. it's all me <laughs> <laughs> When Michael fired Chris, I played the drums. No, um, <laughs> that's true. So the the nice thing about tracking with Earl is because when you work with Earl, he's got it. Like you know that he, he's just the best at what he does. So it really makes you just feel comfortable to just focus on playing and getting into a groove. And so the the take that you hear, one of the guitars and the drums and the bass are all, for the most part, first just just the take. So wow. we're playing all live, including that end. 
that it blasts in after the big psychedelic swirl that Earl produces. And then it does the yard birds freak out at the end. And, uh, um, it, it just, it, it all happened really crisp, really quick. Like what, what we said, where we, you get those couple of takes where everyone's kind of just figuring out what they're doing. And, and Chris is doing it in an endless roll through the whole, through the whole song. And then once you get the arrangement down, he just, he nails it. And, uh, um, so that, that's, what there's one hearing. drum fill. There's one drum fill that I noticed in there. That's mathematically impossible. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know where I, I think it's quantum, the quantum physics. physics. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you need to It can only physics. be explained by Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you can't of... use normal physics. Newtonian mechanics it won't it won't really explain it. <laughs> it it sounds on, I about... think maybe our audience is gonna be like, you know, like uh, engineers and rocket scientists because they can un- they can understand it. Picture that's what you are, Jeff, anyway. That's, so, that's, that's our, why you're that's like our you. target audience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It sounds amazing, and from when we've seen the band perform live, uh, what you guys do with this freakout at the end of Enormous Highs, that's something that you experience at a live Permanent Green Light mm-hmm. show. And just the band, um, I, I say you're all at the top of your game, and this, this freakout is something that you is typical for a Permanent Green Light live performance. So I really like how it came out on the track. It's, it sounds incredible. Oh, thank you, Jim. Cool. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm hope I'm hoping that our live version of this, God willing, we get to do it, would be like like maybe forty minutes. Yes, please. And in fact, maybe yeah. the entire show should just be this one song. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that was what we planned. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna just... I'm gonna need to bring a lot of tea. And then they, and then they can just go and buy the album. You know. <laughs> okay, so we want to know what can fans expect next so we've got this really great single yes um again available um uh, february 26 but what's or next? pre-order Pre- pre-order now yeah, we- pre-order as well <laughs> and, and we're gonna share the link on our page but all right what's next is it matt what's, what's the, next <laughs> what can we expect <laughs> Well, we, we have two songs that Earl Mankey produced, and they're they're kind of in a different side of the they show a different side of the band. They're you know kind of in that when we when we were talking about list, when we were listening back and to the to the to mixes, they they kind of have like the Slade wow. vibe. <laughs> there and, is a Matt Devine song. One of the one of the tracks is a Matt Devine song that makes me want to cry it's so damn good so it i it's beautiful it's, beautiful. it's got a beautiful vocal on it i will say i don't want to talk too much about it but it's uh, it's like matt i fire it's mass firing on all cylinders so that's something to very much look forward to anyway go ahead and, it, and part of it i sing in french yeah that's yeah yes yes he does so soraya <laughs> soraya we're not joking that. <laughs> yeah we're not kidding no i, I <laughs> believe it and then the, the 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 other the flip side of the single is a um, is an anthem, a rock and roll anthem that that Michael started, and I kind of he 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 texted me a, a 20, 30 second snippet of it, and then I came up with with a thing, and kind of and, and when I heard him, like oh god, this sounds like something off Destroyer or or uh, you know some sort of um, glam rock single. That uh, it's funny because Don, Matt Don because Ball I I sent it radio I sent it to Matt. And then Matt's like, not Michael, did you just text me a song? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Was, was that, is that wrong? <laughs> and yeah. he was like, no. He, no. he was like, no. Because I just kind of like turned the, the vote. I just sent him a text, but I like, you know, it was like on video, you know. Oh, okay. So I just sang it into the text, wow. which I guess no one had ever done to Matt before. So anyway, <laughs> he, tried to me- he tried to message me it over LinkedIn and I'm like, Michael, no, don't and then... <laughs> Snapchat next. <laughs> TikTok. TikTok. I tried to do it through MySpace. I don't know why you didn't get it. And then I got, and then I got a telegram that, and then, that, and that then, had it. Oh. <laughs> and then and then you got a singing telegram. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Telegram. Yeah. 
candy gram. Okay, um, we've got two more. We've got another two songs, and then we just have to wait for the next episode. Wait for the next chapter. Yes, <gasps> yes. Yeah. That, yeah. And I, I mean, I, again, we we need to find a home for that. That's the right right, right fit. And and I'd like to we we we'd like to see it come out in the summer. Um, okay. But uh, it's just again, we're in this weird time. Yes. COVID and, uh, and and getting physical product out there in the world. So that that right now we're just enor- right right now we're just enormously high. As are we. So. As are we. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, for all of our listeners. Please, if you haven't already pre-ordered, Soraya and I pr- have this on pre-order for the last two months. So I think it was yeah. like January first or something, or whenever yeah. the pre-order started. Um, so please. Um, it it i think the pre-order they're still taking pre-orders by the time we release this it'll be the release date so please go out and order this you will not be disappointed and i wanted to ask you guys is there any last things that you want to talk about the single before we let you go well we got a couple more minutes um, matt is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about with the single well we haven't talked about chris's book on tea that he's he's oh yeah and we're we're trying to we're trying to coax out of him some more details because we, we kind of have a feeling this will influence our direction. So I'll, I'll Chris, please. All right. I'm putting it's you really, on the it's spot. It's been taking away from the band. That that's the that's the thing. I I've been. It's uh, been. I know this has been really good. unavailable. Well, I mean, because I, he's technically Chris, already been fired, he decided to make become an author. <laughs> anyway, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> well, you know, so so Jeffrey, it, it looks like you you're on board. You're ordering your tea already. I mean, that that's make it's making a splash. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. You're an influence. Okay. Well, well, you did good. You know, wait till you read my book because it, it it's really going to confuse you because it it's, it it doesn't have anything to do with t- well, it 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 does in a certain way, but uh, yeah, I don't know what the book is about. I, I'm actually waiting for you, members of the band, and, and maybe you, Jeffrey and Soraya, to read it and tell me what it's about. Wow. Okay. I'm on because board. I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm just the writer. I, don't, I really have nothing else to do with it. And, and, and it's working beautifully in the concept of, of the, the band and the, and the record we're working on because it's pulling him away from Permanent Green Light, and that's part of the <laughs> concept is the destruction of Permanent Green Light. The first time yeah, I'm giving away, better, I mean, I'm giving away too much, get. but yeah, and actually, yeah. the entire band being replaced by the pizza delivery people is really just the, <laughs> the end, the end result that we want to happen. The band has to die, and and ultimately, yes. <laughs> I think that's going to be a great move for us. Exactly, because like, every, every band has its. That you see it on all those, you know, any story of a band, if they have their. Um, you know, the, the, their arc and then their inexorable decline. And it's like, why don't we hasten that? Just get to yeah. the good part. <laughs> I completely agree with that. Just just get to it already, you know? Yeah, yeah. as a career move, it, it's it's great. It's like kind of like, you know, like like Mr. Roboto sticks, you know, just there, get there already, you know? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if we want to go there, but yeah, that's okay. uh, the lowest of lows right there. Yeah, you yeah. Haven't heard, but you haven't heard my latest song yet. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Michael, you had to go there, right? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> but that illustrates the, the concept perfectly. I'll say that. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh well, this this amazing music. You, I feel like yeah. you guys are at 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 your peak. Um, if you listen to Enormous Highs, which um, we'll play a little sample of it, um, only a little piece of it, but um, the the band is definitely uh, at a high in my, my in my opinion. So thank, thank you guys you. for coming on and talking about it and um, giving us a little idea of what the band's been up to and what we can expect from the future of the band. Thank you guys so much. A lot of fun. Thank you. Hello. Thank you Thank so you much. Soraya, love you, my dear. Big kisses. Big kisses. Same kisses to you guys. Too. Same to you. Care, Thank guys. you so much. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank you, Matt, also. And thank you, Michael. We have really Ciao. appreciate Ciao, it. Ciao, babies. All right. All right. Ciao, Ciao, baby. Bye. 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 Soraya, I did not expect Dude. <laughs> this. Okay. So... We need to let people know. Uh, if you're a fan of Permanent Green Light, you are gonna, you're gonna. I mean, Jeff's wearing a shirt. You can't see it, but he's wearing the shirt. 
You need this. You need this single. Because Jeff's right. They're on their game. And this is really a solid single. Enor- Enormous Highs is crazy good. And this freak out that Jeff and I have been kind of just, we've been really enjoying over uh, just talking about it. It's amazing. And Silver Girl, now that they've given us some background about Silver Girl, the single, and and where the connection is, whew, that, I mean, you need this. And for those of you who aren't too, too familiar with Permanent Green Light, you definitely need their music. But this single is different, Jeff. You got to admit, this is a different single from Permanent Green Light. Oh, yeah. If we think, if we think about against nature, if we, if we think about what we've been given in hallucinations, now we get this complete different sound. And then just listening to them talk about it, I mean, this concept album is pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the conversation that we had today was very, had the same kind of vibe as that the single has, right? I mean, it, the, the dynamics, yeah. the... The muse. <laughs> uh, one take, dude. Live. That freak out. Yeah, that... I mean... That that surprised me, because there's a lot going on there. Yeah. So, yeah, and Matt mentioned it was, like, the his, the first guitar, Michael's bass, Chris's drumming, which all... I mean, each one of those things I can point out is... I was going to say, I mean, Chris's drumming is crazy, crazy good, but... So is the bass. I mean, that the bass part at that freak out. Everything. The guitar. All three of these guys are just on point. It's It's got a lot of energy behind it. And then we have to mention, you know, I I really kind of like what they, what they all mentioned about Earl. Um, that Matt said, you know, I played s- some demos for Earl. And then Earl kind of started guiding the process, you know, just kind of stepping into that producer role. These singles come, you know, take on a whole other life with Earl and, you know, kind of uh, following the band's vision and then really highlighting. I mean, these tracks are are really, really good and they tell a good story. Yes, absolutely. Now, Now that I know a little more, I'm still stumped. Now I'm going to correct myself, Alfred Jarry, but this title is pretty wild, man. And knowing that that title comes from the three of them. Yes. Hey, would you want to be a fly on the wall when the three of them are just chit-chatting, but not about music? Oh, absolutely. You know, just kind of chit-chatting about life and philosophy and stuff. Oh, man, I- I'm absolutely. there. I, I imagine then... it's way, way, way over my head, but I would love to, to, to <laughs> try to understand and. I am. I can picture myself googling everything while they're talking and just trying to figure out, just to bring myself up to speed. I just kind of like the idea, and I have. I have to show you. No one else can see it except for Jeff. Your notes. But, Let me see your notes. Um, but it's like uh, Michael broke it down in a really interesting way, where the ideas begin to process with Chris. Wow. Then Matt got... Matt develops them, and uh, he's like the foreman. Yes. You know, oh, Chris yes. Chris gives the order. Uh, Matt's like the foreman, and then Matt uh, Michael says he comes in like the wayward, lovable misfit. Uh, <laughs> so it's like idea, uh, develop idea, and then kind of idea into bigger picture. And it's like each one of them kind of plays a role. It's really interesting the way they described it. It is, um, yeah. But I think this is what I really like about this band is that sounds like you know just talking with them they're really enjoying this part and this concept album because it it's really you know it it goes into a different level it's really interesting to see how this is all going to be coming out and i really you know um i want to hear these next two songs yes yes you know we were we were fortunate um to to be to be able to hear the single um enormous highs and silver girl and how about that story with silver girl yes yeah it's really 
everywhere. Same, s- same character, Michael says. Same character. Yeah, Matt no, mentioned but, it was the same that, girl. Yep. But that it's uh, it's material that had been there, and just kind of waiting for its moment. That makes and sense that's... to me now that now that they've mentioned that. Now that they yeah. mentioned that, so. By the way, your flow chart. I love it that you just showed me about how <laughs> <laughs> that's very, very good. But in in, in visualizing that with your flow chart and, and um, recalling back uh, the way that Matt and Michael put that together, like how those songs came together, which I'm so glad we asked about, you could see that, and, and this go, probably goes for any three-piece band, but each one of them is crucial to these songs being formed without matt as michael said that they wouldn't happen right and then the right. mu- the muse is totally chris bruckner right um and matt said that you know chris admitted that and michael said that too and of course uh these don't exist without michael Quercio. there you go so these each one of them has um inserted parts of themselves into these songs to give us oh, what, yeah. what we hear now yeah. And I'm going to be listening to these songs uh, in, until this next single comes out. So until summer, whenever it happens. Um, until we get to hear this rock and roll anthem, because I'm in. I'm and totally in. And any song that Michael Corsio says is so beautiful, it makes him cry. Oh, you know how I am. I want to hear it. Yes. And you know how I am, Soraya, with Matt Devine's songs. Um, yes, I do. My, Yeah. So I... I cry when when Matt at any of Matt's songs. So even the rockers. So and then a, a Slade type rocker B side. Come on, Slade Destroyer. I mean, yes, we got, we got a lot of name drops today. Deep Purple, Slade Destroyer, Kiss, uh, and I'm missing one. I'll find it it's somewhere in my you know somewhere in this. And then you got the the jazz drummer in the back. Oh yeah. So, and anything that involves Matt Devine, you're gonna have a little bit of stones come through. So there's always that. hundred percent. And you know it's and then Ricky Start. We got a Ricky Start mention in Mind Garden. So it's got a a really interesting vibe, really good vibe, good energy on these on both of these tracks and. You need this in your collection. So, again, Hypnotic Bridge um, releasing this single, Norma Size, Silver Girl. We're going to add the link on our on our site. But by the time you hear this episode, it it's is available. ready to order. It's available. But um, and you need it. You need it, and you're going to enjoy it. Yes. Fantastic work by the band. Yes. If you and, like, you know. If, if you like rock and roll, if you like psychedelic rock, you're going to love this. And Jeff, we can't say enough about the magic of making sure that Chris Bruckner is fired at every song. <laughs> it adds a little something. Yeah, yeah. Him and that book on tea, getting fired all the time. There's so, something that he brings. You're going to have to help me out on this book of tea. So is yeah. this, these guys like to have fun in this conversation. Sure. So is this book of tea legit or are we being played here? So Look. Help I am me. not one to question Chris Bruckner. <laughs> so I'm going to say it is legit. It is cold, hard truth that he himself doesn't know what's in this book. Mm. That's why he's going to give it to us to read. And Matt was the one that brought it up in the first place. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking this is something that I'm ready to read and uh, try to try to translate. Hey, Jeff, and if it's not legit... I still bought in. I'm in. <laughs> Me too. I'm riding that Chris Bruckner uh, book on T train. I'm riding that. I'm there so. too. I'm there too. <laughs> hard hardcover, soft cover, either way. Hey Amen. Hard- Even if he puts it, if he puts it out and it's all loose leaf and you have to put it together yourself, <laughs> we're in. Written on tea leaves. <laughs> <laughs> you have to add water for the for the words to come out. I can yeah, read we're tea. There. I can read tea leaves. Come on. Why not? Why not? Permanent is... Green Light, so good to hear new music from them, and especially these two songs. Agreed, absolutely. Great start. So, and then Jeff, we just have to wait, just like, just like a great episode of a show. We gotta wait for the next episode. Yeah. So we'll 
we've got chapter four here. Is the next episode chapter five? Is it chapter three? Well, is it it cha- could be like Star Wars, right? So we started with chapter four, mm-hmm. and we went forward, and then we hopped back. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But we're here for them to tell us the story. We're going to take the next chapter and put it in the order wherever we want. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on this ride. I'm on this, waiting in line for this ride. Six feet between the person in front of me, six feet between the person <laughs> behind me. I'm in line for this ride. Woo! That was fun. That, that was, was a lot fun. of fun. All right, mi gente. Agro Groove on, Paisley people.